everyone. Hey, congratulations to Road to Galena. Hey, hey, thank, thank you. Thank you, Gig. Thank you. Hey, it's it's a pleasure uh, speaking to all, all of you. But let me toss that first question out to Joe. Joe, where did the original idea came from for Road to Galena for you? <clears throat> well, it was um, it was a story I thought long about. Um, how best to tell uh, in this, basically this notion that for so many of us, uh, people carry uh, a dream with them throughout their life. And oftentimes people carry it with them, you know, sometimes even unspoken. Uh, and uh, the notion that if you had the chance to do it, would you do it? And if someone said to you today, you know what, here it is, go for it. Would you have the gumption to actually pull the trigger? And so um, I thought along uh, time about how best to tell that story and then uh, was spending some time on the eastern shore and um, the beauty of the surroundings there uh, the story just sort of came to me on the, on the, a, a trip through uh, through and around uh, Galena Maryland and uh, the road to Galena was born. Most excellent Ben Amy Will what initially attracted you three to a film like this I guess we'll start with Ben first. Yeah, I think, you know, the script was was put in my lap and I got the opportunity to read it and I was I was I was fell in love with it. So I was fortunate enough to then have a meeting with Joe. And so he and I talked over Zoom for about an hour and talked about our thoughts and our ideas on it and felt like we were on the same page. And then fortunately enough, was able to go to Maryland and, and D.C. and and shoot this thing and work with everybody. So it was uh, yeah, it was a it was a great time. <laughs> Excellent. Amy? Yeah, I mean, um, after reading the script and, and you know, having a, a Zoom conversation with Joe, um, because we shot, you know, everything during COVID, um, just the, you know, the complexity of the characters, the messiness of it, I feel like it was such a reflection of, of life and um, the choices that we make and, and where we end up in following these characters um, right out of high school into their, you know, late 30s, early 40s, and, and being able to tell the story of what happens with those choices that we make and what are the outcomes um, of, you know, pursuing our passions and our dreams or um, succumbing to pressures of what we think we should be or what people are telling us that we should do. Excellent. Will? Yeah, I just thought it was a great story, you know, um, sort of timeless and, and uh, it was uh, it was nice to be in the middle of the pandemic and to be able to look forward to the future about uh, or just sort of look forward and think okay I'm gonna get to go film this movie at some point just hang in there you know so it's a, it's a great opportunity <laughs> terrific Joe tell tell us about uh, the in this film. You, you kind of pick the uh, villains, sort of like the lawyers, the bankers, and the big corporations. Uh, tell, tell us about that. About that. Well, you know, I, I don't really see any, any bad guy in this story. I think everyone, um, everyone is an honest character. I mean, even you look at, um, you look at Sarah, um, Cole's wife, you know, she's not a, she's not a likable character uh, in some ways, but she is a very honest character, right? I mean, it's very clear as to what she wants. I think that uh, you look at um, each of the characters, they have, they bring their own uh, perspective to uh, their world and to the world, broadly speaking, in, in an honest way. And, I, and then when you look at, uh, um, you know, the bankers and the lawyers and so on, I don't think they're necessarily the bad guy. They're just not the right fit for Cole. Uh, um, you know, everyone plays an honest part in this uh, in this story to include uh, the city of Washington and to include the town of Galena uh, and Cole's law partners and bankers and others. They just uh, they're not good or bad. They're just they just exist. And it's just not the place for Cole. Um, it's not the place for Cole to exist. Most excellent. Now, let's let's talk about that three way chemistry. Uh, you know, this is a. This is a very close knit friendship, but it's a it's not a typical friendship either, because not a lot of um, you know three way friendships actually last last a very very long time. Um, so uh, let, let's uh, let, let's say 
you, you three here, could you uh, talk to us how you three established the chemistry for a film like this? I'm going to start backwards with Will first. Uh, well, we all got to hang out for a little bit before we started the first day of filming and um, went to dinner and spent some time with each other. And I think luckily we all got along quite, quite great. And um, so it's, it's pretty easy to establish chemistry when you enjoy the people you're working with. Um, and, you know, I didn't really like Ben that much at first. And as time went on, I grew to like him less and less. But that's part of the job is to just, you know, convey. You're just a good actor, Will. You're just yeah. a good actor. Just to, to push through that, that difficulty. <laughs> Amy? Uh, yeah. Um, honestly, it was, um, it was such a great cast and crew to work with. And I think the, the beauty of, you know, indie filmmaking is that everybody's so passionate and has to be passionate about a project to, you know, show up and, um, I think everybody was on the, the same page and, and Joe sort of provided that space um, for us to get to know each other and talk through characters and, and do rehearsals and really kind of talk about um, where our characters are uh, in this movie and because it goes over the, the course of about 20 years of really establishing where those relationships are at the beginning, in the middle, in the end, and really how those evolve and change. Um, and like life how you rely on people for different things at different points in your life and different things you can provide in relationships and in community and um kind of getting back down to really what you know what is you know companionship and relationships and um you know, the people that are in your life are there for a reason in a way like your chosen family great ben oh gosh going off of will uh <laughs> no, it's, uh, I think, I think building all of our chemistry and I think both of them said it great, especially Bill. Um, but, uh, I think, I think it was great to just have, you know, like-minded people around you who you, like Will said, we went down and, and, and we all got dinner the first night and had a, you know, got to really know each other and open up and it helped that we were all in kind of a secluded area and, um, and we really had to rely on each other for support on and off set, which was, I think that in of itself just builds, builds strong chemistry. And it's, it's just nice to work with good people, genuine people, people who you would consider friends even outside of, of work. Um, so I think it was really easy to just build that, that little three-way chemistry um, and, and make it work. Most excellent. Joe, I'm going to let you add on to this uh, because uh because I understand this is your first time as a filmmaker, uh, how how great it is to have like, you know, these experienced uh, thespians uh, to your side. So um, it was a uh, it was a real gift for me to work with such a talented cast. Um, I mean, Amy and, and Ben and, and Will uh, and Jay Sanders and Margaret Collin and Jill Hennessy and, and Jennifer Holliday. I mean, just a, a wonderful cast. Elisa Alapak, um, everyone brought such a, uh, a wealth of experience. Uh, um, and uh, it was a very collaborative effort. I think that uh, the reason we delivered a really beautiful film is the uh, collective insight and experience of a really gifted cast and a, and a really committed crew. I think you know, the crew really embraced the story. I think everybody was really into the story and um, uh, and just doing it during the pandemic, it was uh, it was just the right story for the right moment. So um, everyone really, uh, really latched onto it. And I had the benefit of uh, learning a great deal from everyone involved. Great. Now, Joe, uh, tell us about the small town Galena that, uh, that you actually kind of chose, chose as a setting and um, and was everything filmed in Galena, including, you know, like uh, so the, the farms and the, and the, yeah, bank so and, and the lawyer's offices? Galena is, is an intersection uh, on the eastern shore of Maryland. I mean, there is literally a, a, single, uh, a single intersection with a, a light. Uh, it's a beautiful agricultural area. Um, and what makes, what makes the eastern shore so unique is that it is, it is, sort of embedded in and around the Chesapeake Bay. So you have all, you have water plays a role there and you have all these inlets and so on. And then you have uh, the beautiful agricultural area around it. It's a really unique 
place. Uh, we shot, I think, just one or two scenes actually in the town of Galena. The rest of it was shot throughout uh, um, Kent County and um, that broader Eastern Shore community, Chestertown, um, uh, and a lot of these little small sort of hamlets around there. And everyone on the Eastern Shore just really embraced the crew. They embraced the story. It was, they were a very welcoming community for, uh, for the whole production. I'm curious, um, all, um, you folks uh, mentioned that uh, this was filmed during the pandemic um, during, for, for, for this production. What was it like to be in a small town uh, community filming, you know, a movie um, during the pandemic? What, was, it, was it easy or hard? Um, how, how was the community actually felt like? I'll, I'll start with you, Joe, then I'll ask you. Well, I think that, you know, in a way we were, we were fortunate because so much of the film is shot outside and in, a, in an area where we could spread out. So at a point where everybody was really concerned about tight places and in big crowds, we had the advantage of being able to spread out. And um, uh, we had a very tightly run uh, COVID compliance infrastructure on set, which helped. And, um, and we were kind of bubbled up the whole, the whole production team and, and many of the members of the cast all stayed at a single location. It was a very camp-like setting. Um, it literally had a big uh, fire ring that uh, uh, we could come back from set at the end of the day and sit around the fire and sort of catch up on a day. So it was a, it was a really, it was a really unique uh, event. Um, there was a member of the crew one night, we were sitting by the fire and he said, uh, uh, it was our, our gaffer said one of the PAs had said to him that day, like, this is the greatest experience of my life. We're sitting around this fire and so on. And he said, I leaned over to him and I said, like, don't get used to it. This is not, <laughs> this is not normal. Like uh, coming back, you know, from, from uh, shooting and sitting around a campfire and sort of catching up on the day is not, is not normal. So we, we really lucked out. Great. Amy, how was your experience uh, in the land? Yeah, you know, it was it was lovely. Um, I had never been to, to Maryland prior to shooting this um, project and um, the community there were just um, so wonderful and opening their their homes and their businesses and um, being on a production in a pandemic where you're also seeing how devastating the pandemic has been to some of these small towns and businesses that you know have shut their doors forever um I think really added another layer to telling you know the story that you you know sort of the human struggle and trying to um figure out what you want to do with your life even if it's not something that's going to make you a a lot of money but if you go to bed at night being passionate about what you're going to do the next morning and the job that you do and your contribution to the society at large I think that um, a lot of that gets reflected in this film. Great what about you for, for you Ben? Yeah I think sh shooting during the pandemic especially in a small town at times for me at least it didn't even feel like there was a pandemic because there was nobody around. I mean, we're in the, frankly, the middle of nowhere or what felt like the middle of nowhere where you could drive on a road for miles and not pass a single car. Um, but I think what was the most exciting thing about it was going off of what Amy said, where you do see a lot of maybe uh, just loss of hope in some of these small towns during something like this. And then for us to show up and, and, I don't know, it brought some excitement to the towns that we were shooting in. I mean, people would come out and they would watch and something that doesn't really happen on the Eastern Shore that much is to have a film come and shoot there in, in some of these small towns. So it was great to see the excitement that it brought into like some of these locals who wanted to come out and watch and, and be a part of. They wanted to be extras and they wanted to participate. And it was fun to feel like it was a collaborative experience even with the locals where you're like hey we're using your town and you want to be a part of this and we want you to be a part of this because this is you this is your story this is your life um so that was kind of my takeaway from from shooting there uh because same as amy I'd, I'd been to maryland before but never been on on the eastern shore on that side so it was great to explore it and see 
see the communities that are over there and, and get to know a lot of the amazing people that are there. Great. And Will, I'm giving you the last word. Of how was your experience and do you even know how to um, work on a tractor? Yeah, I know how to work on a tractor, man. Come on. Uh, yeah, I think it was like, you know, small town doesn't necessarily mean small people. Um, yeah. We're some really big people there doing some really big things. Red Acres Farm, where we filmed a lot, is uh, the cutting edge of hydroponics when it comes to using that to grow lettuce, you know, and there it is on the Eastern Shore, a small little farm, but it's some really in impressive technology. And, you know, we had an incredible crew. I mean, you're talking about a crew based out of Baltimore mostly, and these guys are filming, you know, half the stuff for HBO and Showtime. So, uh, you know, having all those tools, like an incredible environment and really talented crew members, even though it was in the pandemic in a small town, it, it, it made it actually really efficient, I feel like, and uh, everybody did a pretty swell job. Well, all of you did a terrific job on Road to Galena. Thank you for the conversation um, about this film. And I, I could tell you guys didn't make a wrong choice in life. You followed your dreams. So congratulations. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.